Hello, and welcome to Replay Value. In a season with my favorite rom-com manga properly adapted, a well-executed psychological thriller, the sequel season to one's best work, and the conclusion to a production IG sports anime, I have been incredibly spoiled this winter. But the cherry on top has got to be the fact that one of the best shows of the season is continuing on into spring making Dororo the show to beat for every anime making their debut in the coming weeks. Dororo is impressive on multiple levels. The OPED combo convey the tonal gradient that this show achieves emotionally, and I'm continually impressed by the deliberate pace of the story, one of the tangible benefits of having such a strong vision and adaptation. But where Dororo elevates beyond its impressive technical laurels is in its characters, not only in the performances, but in the writing. The fact that Hyakimaru is such an interesting character when he has said all of 10 words as of the halfway point is an achievement in and of itself, and the character Dororo is the important emotional core of the show. With their partnership set to develop more over the second half, which I could not be more excited about. But the other side of the conflict, Hyakimaru's family, I think is the most interesting, and while we haven't gotten all that much time with them, their impression on the story is hard to avoid because of how they frame the core conflict at the center of Dororo, and why that moral quandary makes every character so much more interesting. The concept of utilitarianism is one that you're likely familiar with, even if you've only a cursory interest in narrative since so many stories base their moral conflict around it. Utilitarianism most simply means, to quote Spock, that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. If this sounds familiar, it should. Gen Urobuchi seemingly cannot write a work without considering utilitarian ethics in some way, and it even affects shows that you'd never expect like Gurren Lagann, Akatsuki no Yona, and Kakagurui. The best action in a utilitarian framework is one that maximizes the happiness or utility of the most people, which means that we're making moral judgments about actions based on their consequences. The opposite of this, moral judgments based on actions regardless of their consequences, is deontological ethics, and the determination for that morality being specific to the type of deontology used. Of course, morality isn't that simple. Most people will find themselves balancing action and consequence, as we can see in the trolley problem. You've probably seen this in memes, specifically the multi-track drifting variety, but it started off as a thought experiment in ethics. You see a runaway train heading towards five people tied up on the tracks. You stand by a lever that can swap the direction to a side track, but there's one person tied up there. You can either do nothing and five people will die, or you can pull the lever and one person will die. What do you do? If you choose to take an action, you're likely making a utilitarian decision, saving the five over the one. If you choose to do nothing, you're likely concluding that the action of killing someone is immoral, even if indirectly. There is the possibility that you could theoretically run down the rabbit hole of whether that situation already implements an immoral choice because doing nothing is still an action, etc, etc, but for the sake of simplicity, let's say that doing nothing is not an action. About 81% of people when surveyed say that it's okay to pull the lever, to save 5 over the 1. But the next variation adds another element. Now instead of a second track, there's a random person in front of you who you can push onto the track to stop the train. You can either do nothing and five people will die, or you can push the person in front of you, killing them but saving the five. What do you do? It's fundamentally the same question, but now we're changing an indirect action into a direct one. And for approximately 42% of people, that changes things, with only 38% of respondents saying that it's moral to push that person. Other sources claim that 90% of people feel it's immoral to push the person, but I can't find the study that that claim originated from, so even though it's not as shocking as an 80% swing, a supermajority to a minority is a significant change. And it's evidence that few people believe with 100% certainty in consequences or actions being the only important element when debating morality, but with some balance between the two, and in intentionality, the reason for taking an action as well. And that balance and intention is the very thing that Dororo explores, and is not only revealing for the kind of ethics the viewer holds onto, 
but also the reasoning behind them. So we're gonna go through each of the characters and determine where they stand on the two moral quandaries at the center of the show and ask a few hypothetical questions to help illuminate our moral values. The very premise of Dororo is technically a moral question, albeit the easier one of the two where we have the decision of Daigo sacrificing his son to demons, which results in the land being prosperous. It's important to note that I'm assuming that the deal is straightforward. Episode 12 kind of hints that the land might have been struggling because of the unlocked demons, and that perhaps after they're all slain, things will get better, or that after a certain amount of time, they would have reneged on their half of the deal. But for this discussion, I'm assuming that Hyakimaru gets consumed and the demons keep the land bountiful until time immemorial, or at least until Daigo passes. So with that being said, if we're not concerned with the action taken, the sacrifice, under a utilitarian lens we can state that Daigo's decision was moral, since the land doing well certainly benefits the many. But it's unlikely you feel that way. I certainly don't feel like Daigo's decision was moral. But I wonder if that's because I object to the utilitarian aspect of sacrificing an unknowing participant, or because of the kind of person that Daigo is. And what I mean by that is that Daigo is an ethical egoist, a type of consequentialism, judgment based on outcomes over actions, where self-interest is what is attempting to be maximized instead of happiness. Daigo makes his deal with the demons explicitly so that he can achieve his ambitions. It has nothing to do with the fact that his people are starving and dying except for how that curtails his desires. He later rationalizes his actions and decisions through the lens of state consequentialism, stating that as ruler, his needs and wants are the needs and wants of his people, and therefore his self-interest is the interest of the state. But we've already had a peek under the veil at that point and can recognize how selfish Daigo is, even if the outcomes positively impacted the land. Most of the cast acknowledges Daigo's actions as immoral. Tahomaru and Oku both state that. It's clear where the character of Dororo stands, although we don't know for certain where Hyakumaru comes down on the matter. Daigo is the only person who thinks his actions were moral, but I'd imagine very few people would agree with him because of his intentions. That's why the hypothetical I pose for this first quandary is if Daigo had stated that his desire for his land to flourish was so that his people would be healthy and safe, would his decision have been moral? On top of that, if he offered to sacrifice himself, not one of his belongings, but his own personhood, would that be moral? I ask these hypotheticals because it's clear that in the decision not to engage in these, Daigo is deliberately being painted by the show in a negative light. It would be very easy to make the character more relatable or just a little bit more righteous, but he's basically rotten down to the core because his intentions are morally wrong, even if his outcomes are a boon for the many. So the second moral question, and the one that's a lot more debatable I think, is whether Hyakimaru should be stopped from hunting demons. Again, if we apply a utilitarian lens, it's clear that he should be stopped. His lone suffering is nothing compared to the thousands who will starve and die should the land return to ruin. Daigo, being vested only in his self-interest, believes that firmly, wanting to go so far as to kill Hyakimaru. On the other side, we have Oku, Hyakimaru's mother, who believes that the actions taken in him losing his body were immoral, but is unable to do anything, stating that she cannot save him, and that no matter how wrong they were, they can't do anything but ask for his forgiveness. I interpret these statements as her saying she will not break the agreement with the demons, but that she wouldn't stop Hyakimaru from continuing to kill them. In this way, she is little more than a despairing beneficiary, a knowingly remorseful one, who certainly seems to value actions and outcomes in equal measure to a point of paralysis, until Hyakimaru returns to bring her own thought processes to the surface. If you interpret her statements as her willing to let Hyakimaru die, then that viewpoint is held by Tahomaru, who is a mix of both of his parents. He is in agreement with his mother that the sacrifice itself was immoral, but in agreement with his father that the matters of the state are above the individual, to a point where he is also willing to kill Hyakimaru. Even if the act of killing him is wrong, it matters not compared to the people who will suffer if he lives. Tahomaru is a true state consequentialist here. His intentions are just, as opposed to his father, who merely justifies his decisions in that manner. Here's why I think this state of affairs is so much more interesting. Prior to this moment, Hyakimaru had no knowledge that his actions were negatively impacting people. In fact, he was only helping people as far as he knew. Now that he knows, will his moral code call for him to leave behind the quest to regain his body? 
Or will he continue onward despite the belief that it might bring despair? Is he willing to self-sacrifice though the initial sacrifice was not willing, or will he attempt to right this wrong despite the consequences? The answer to these will hopefully be answered in future episodes, though I have a feeling They'll be circumvented by the circumstances of the deal not entirely being above board as I stated earlier. But the question still remains, should Hyakimaru be stopped from hunting the demons? If he decided to continue to hunt the demons, would you say that that is morally right? I'd bet dollars to donuts that the character Dororo does. For Hyakimaru, if we accept that the action of slaying demons is right and that the consequence of that action, the destruction of the land, is wrong, does the matter come down to intention? Does it matter for you whether Hyakimaru continues to slay demons to protect the individuals still under siege by them, or whether he's doing it so that he and Dororo can make a few bucks? Does it change your opinion if he's doing it for the sake of justice so that he can be whole again or if he's doing it simply for the adrenaline thrill of putting one's life on the line. If you value intentionality, you'll likely think that Daigo, who acts selfishly, is immoral, and that Tahomaru, who would perform the same action as Daigo, would be morally justified in his killing, even if you disagree with the decision itself. If you think that both are immoral, perhaps intentionality does not matter to you, even if the expression of Hyakimaru's individual desire to regain his body will actively harm the life and liberty of thousands of others. I'll add this hypothetical just in case you need another push to center in on your conclusion. If Hyakimaru had initially chosen to be sacrificed and then began to hunt down the demons to take his body back, would that be okay? I think moral quandaries are fascinating as the basis for conflict because of how they not only tear up characters internally, but how it gives multiple sides a solid foundation for believing their side is just. I felt a bit torn when I watched Hyakimaru and Tahomaru fight, as fate has a tendency to be cruel. Neither of these characters is morally wrong, wanting to survive isn't wrong, wanting to protect people isn't wrong, and thus we arrive at the inevitable conflict. You can't have both, one will have to win, and one will have to lose. And hopefully Dororo won't go in the direction of making Tahomaru more like his father, and give Hyakimaru the out of the demons being the source of the land's difficulties in the first place. Because a fight where both sides are equally wrong and right, and the audience is forced to feel a pang of sadness for the loser, is one that is truly memorable a moral quandary that both characters and audience are forced to come to terms with. Let me know your thoughts on any of the questions or moral quandaries in the comments, in particular whether you think Hyakimaru is justified in hunting the rest of the demons down. I also want to quickly acknowledge that ethics and morals are really complex topics, philosophers have been arguing about them for millennia for a reason, and that I did my best in condensing and simplifying for the sake of what I thought was an interesting discussion. But I know it probably wasn't perfect. If you find this kind of thing interesting, I highly recommend some self-study, and I'll drop some of the texts that I used in my research down in the description. If there's a desire for it, maybe we can talk more about the use of ethics and morality in narrative in the future. But for now, I'm just looking forward to seeing how Dororo's ethical dilemma evolves in the second half, even as I acknowledge that the party is over.